Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's overview of Logic Pro X 10.4. Before I go into an overview, it's important to point out that this is a free upgrade for Logic Pro X users. And with all the new features that have been added, any other door maker, I would imagine, would have charged for such a big upgrade. Considering over the past few years, Logic has given me and you alchemy, drummer, drum machine designer, VCAs, true stereo panning, selection-based processing, loudness metering, and much, much more, all for free. That makes us Logic users pretty spoiled. So what do we lucky Logic lovelies get with 10.4? Well, in this video, we'll look at a brief overview of Smart Tempo, Vintage EQ, Direction Mixer, Mixer and Plugin Undo, and the new Reverb. I'll cover other stuff in, uh, in other videos. Smart Tempo. So we get Smart Tempo, which has powerful new tempo analysis and editing capabilities. You can record a new part or drag and drop a loop and Logic will automatically flex the recording to sync with the tempo of your project. This is going to make remixing and importing audio with different tempos an absolute breeze. This feature also allows you to adapt the tempo of the session to match the tempo of an imported audio file. And it does all this automatically behind the scenes, depending on how you set everything up. Another cool feature that I love is that recorded audio will now adapt to the tempo changes you make within the project. If, like me, you've ever been writing and have recorded in different audio parts live, say a bass or guitar, and later down the line decide the tempo is wrong, it was a real pain to either time stretch, quantize audio, or re-record guitars, etc. Now, with Smart Tempo, Logic will adapt to your recorded audio to fit new tempos. Vintage EQ. We all know the holy grail for a lot of third-party plugin manufacturers is hardware emulation. Logic have joined the party with the addition of some very nice looking new EQs. Neve API and Poltec style emulations have been added to the EQ bundle and it's a very nice addition indeed. Apart from the fact that they sound great, the idea here is to add some vintage character to your mixes. And one thing that makes a hardware EQ stand out is the gain stage where you can saturate and drive the signal. So Logic have added an on-off switch internally so you can drive the signal but bypassing the EQ stage. This is cool because you can add color to the mix without actually adding any EQ. However, add some EQ to the equation combined with the drive and you'll not only shape the frequency but you can decide on how much distortion and color you want to add too. Not only that, but you can further shape the sound by selecting different types of vintage modeling by clicking on the output model drop down menu where you can select from silky, punchy and smooth and of course off if you don't want any output modeling. You can also select either natural or linear phase modes which affects how the drive interacts with the EQ. Logic have really thought about developing a plugin which not only emulates vintage classics but gives you the ability to shape the tone color and add harmonics as well as simply shaping and correcting frequency. It's a great plugin set that I'm sure you'll find plenty of use for. The Direction Mixer. This one not many people will be talking about but I think is going to be really, really useful. The Direction Mixer can now be split into two frequency bands. This allows users to set a crossover point and then independently adjust the width of the band. For example, you could have a drum loop and widen the hats in the top end frequencies by setting a high crossover point and then dragging out the high spread slider, dragging it out to the sides. This is a great way to add width to a loop in the top end without affecting the lows, such as kicks. It would also be great on pads and synths too, where you may want the lower frequencies to stay in the middle of the stereo image, but add more width and spread the higher you go in pitch. Mixer and plugin undo. This proves Apple listens, and we got there eventually. 
It's something users have been asking for for a long time, and it's finally here. We can now undo plugin and mixer based moves, making life quick, simple, and easy. We've all been there. You're working on a patch, tweaking and fine tuning a sound that is perfect, but before you know it, you've continued tweaking and the patch now sounds, well, awful. With the addition of plugin undo, you can always find your way back to that perfect patch. Also, with mixer undo, you can not only go back and undo individual track positions, but it works for multiple selected tracks too. I read somewhere once, Andrew Sheps once said the advantage of working on a door is if the meters are pushing into the red, then you can grab all the tracks and bring everything down relative to each other to see how it sounds at a lower level. If it works, great. If not, and now with mixer undo, you can undo and go back to the original position. It's a really brilliant new addition. Logic has done the double with Reverb. Not only has the GUI of Space Designer been updated, and I think it's a much better plugin to sort of walk around, but they have also added a brand new Reverb called Chromaverb. So, the manual says, I'm going to gabble on as if I've not been gabbling on enough already. Chromaverb features 14 discrete algorithms that provide a different tonal color. The fundamental approach behind Chromaverb diverges from other methods of reverb creation. It is based on the principle of a circular structure in which the sound is gradually absorbed, much like in a real room. Now, I've bought a lot of different reverb plugins in my time, and I'd say for the quality of this reverb and the creative possibilities of just this plugin alone, is worth the whole cost of Logic Pro X. It's a really good reverb and I think it will be a go-to plugin for a lot of producers. The reason I think that is because it seems to work with only a few tweaks. What I mean by that is I'll often load a reverb up and it will take some time to find the right preset to get it to work in the mix. Creating space is a complex process and choosing the right reverb can be hard at times and can really make or break the sound of a mix. The idea of focusing the plugin on absorption is great and actually seems to give much more control. It won't be perfect for everything, but having loaded it on a few different sounds already, I think you'll find a great deal of use for this plugin. And let's not even mention that cool graphic display jumping and dancing around. Obviously, this isn't a detailed view of the plugin, but two features I think are plugin highlights of the Chromaverb are the decay and distance features. Logic have added the ability to set the decay time based on rhythmical values, which is a great feature, perfect for sound design, dance, pop, and urban styles of music, for example, where the rhythm of the music is crucially important. The distance feature is brilliant and really allows you to tailor the sound so that it fits perfectly within the mix. It allows you to push instruments back by dialing in at greater distance or bringing sounds forward in the mix by shortening the distance. This effectively allows you to place instruments all in the same room together, but will appear to be either further forward or further back in the room. That is a true plus for both putting sound in a sound stage and for mixing quickly and efficiently. So that's it for the moment. I will do my best to cover some of the other features too and share my thoughts on the new multi effects. And I'm very excited to hear just how good the studio horns and studio strings sound. Until next time, happy mixing and mastering, and thanks for watching.